Hi, this is Jesse Liberty for Telerik. Today we're going to be talking about the RAD time bar and specifically creating it in code. In our previous video, we looked at how to create it in XAML. Today we look at how to create it in C Sharp. To get started, let's create a new project. We'll make that a C Sharp RAD Control Silverlight application, of course. We'll name it RAD TB dot code. We'll take that as a Silverlight 5 application and when the Telerik project configuration wizard comes up we're going to check data visualization which will give us the necessary references and all of their dependencies as you can see in the solution explorer on the right this time we are not going to use mainpage.xaml we're going to leave that exactly as it is and open mainpage.xaml.cs the code behind now you will remember that to use a rad time bar we need to have content that's just a container and the content that we're going to use this time is a rad area sparkline the rad area sparkline is instantiated in code by saying new rad area sparkline. We're going to need a random number generator to generate some data for the sparkline. And then we're going to need a list of integers, which will be the data that we will make the item source for the sparkline. Let's create a for loop to generate the data. With that for loop in place, we can add a integer to the list for each iteration by using the random number generator and generating a number between 0 and 60. Once we have our data, we can set the item source for the sparkline to that data. Now the sparkline is in place, we're ready to create our rad time bar. So let's go ahead and instantiate a rad time bar object, which we will call time bar. The first task with time bar is to call begin init. We'll do all our initialization and then we'll call end init. The first part of our initialization will be to set the width and height. We're also going to set the period start. That's going to be the earliest date that will be shown within the time bar and the corresponding period end. You remember this from when we declared it in XAML. It's the same here. We can also declare the area that we would like to have on display when we first start up the project. And for that, we use the visible period start and visible period end. We can also have a selected period. And for that, we use the selection start and selection end. You'll remember in the XAML that we set intervals. We set them here in the code as well by adding them one by one. In this case, we're going to add the month, week, and day interval. We need to add a using statement for that. And with that done, we can call end init to end the initialization. However, we're not quite done. We need to set the content of the time bar to be equal to the spark line we created above. And then we need to set the content of this page to the time bar that we just created. With all of that in place, we're ready to save, build, and run our application. The time bar comes up in the visible period. Notice the selection area as chosen programmatically. We can slide back and forth to see the entire data set. We can expand and contract just as we could previously to give a new perspective on our data. We can even slide our selection and we can expand and contract our selection area. I hope you've seen how easy it is to create a RAD time bar programmatically. That is in C Sharp. For Telerik, this is Jesse Liberty. I look forward to talking with you again very soon.